Down. This is the first time taking this off since we put it on. It's a big attachment. Soon, actually, in this video, we're going to be tilling up a stretch right behind this row of attachments. Oh, we got something in there. That uh, oh. that's going to become a kind of a parking pad for tractor attachments. Right now they're just sitting on the grass and the grass is growing around them. It's annoying. Um, and so what we're going to do is, is put some gravel down in some different areas for all the attachments. Try to get things organized around here. Cleaned up a bit. Easier to maintain. All that kind of stuff. But first step we have to set up that tiller which is uh, not been used, still on the shipping crate. That there. That's a big heavy PTO shaft right there. Now this might take a few tries. That's uh, one of the nice things about quick hitches is um, you pull those levers and you drop something down, your three point down and it just releases. And sometimes if you, especially a big bulky heavy thing like this, if you don't have it just right, there's pressure on the three point arms and the pins don't want to release. Uh, let's take care of these hydraulics while I'm thinking about it. I need to get some out back right on those. Some sun protection. Oh boy, this thing is grimy. A lot of dust. I'll show you how these hoses store here in just a second. Definitely want to use the dust covers. There we go. Watch these. You don't see this too often, but these are all little storage spots just to kind of have them hang out so they're not getting down in the dirt and the grass and everything else. I've not seen that in any of their attachments, at least not ones that we sell or anything I've seen online either. I'm sure it's out there, but uh, pretty cool. That makes it nice and easy. Let's give it a go here. Yeah, that's wiggling free, so there's no pressure on that one. Well, not much anyways. Oh, we got this retainer here though. Cool. That went really smooth. Wow, this side's not bound up either. <clears throat> Sweet. You don't really want to stand in between the tractor and the equipment if you can avoid it. If you got to get like one leg in there, be nimble. It's a, a safety thing. I mean, this is pretty stable. It's got two front arms, it's resting on the back. This pin is spinning freely, well, fairly freely. I can move it, so there's not a lot of weight that's like being pushed on here forward, like it would want to come crashing forward. But the safety thing, you got to be aware of that because this equipment will shift once it's disconnected. Obviously, here it did not. It's a pretty stable setup. Okay, so I'm going to pull away a little bit, put these pins back in the attachment. Um, take the bucket off, put the forks on. We're going to lift the tiller out of that metal shipping frame and um, get it set up and ready to work.
can see just a, a corner, like a half inch. Try to just kind of. Oh, I got it. Okay. I don't know why, I have a bit of trouble with this Kubota skid steer quick attach and some of you may have seen a video in the winter where I thought I had it latched in and I did not. Okay, so they're fully up, down, down, <clears throat> pins are through, yeah, pins are fully through there, so we're good. so long. Is it stable enough to drive down there yet? I am probably too cautious of a driver, and that is not a very steep slope, but if you have a big heavy load on the front of your tractor or go downhill, you'd be more likely to tip over frontwards versus if I back down it like this and all that heavy weight's up front uphill, that's a really tough thing to tip over that way and if you do you're not tipping nearly as far because the hills you know going up in front of you anyway that's just how my mind works in hindsight I should have picked this from the other way because now it's facing the wrong way in here to get picked up and we're gonna have to rotate it around I could do it outside but I'm already sweating to death to take the shade when I can, so we'll figure that out. Oh, I need to put the kickstand down. Ah, come on, roll for it, buddy. Obviously, it'd be nice to have just a shorter chain hook here. We've got a, two, three of them at the shop, but uh, I just get tired of buying redundant things all the time for multiple places, but we don't have to do this very often, so too long of a strap, but it got the job done. No big deal. Gearbox first. So most gearboxes, but not all, have the fill plug on top and then a, uh, um, a plug on the side as well that will basically indicate you open, you open that side plug up and then you fill the gearbox until the oil starts to 
seep out of that side hole. And that means you've got enough in there. You're not looking to fill the gearbox the entire way up. That is not needed and shouldn't be done. Expect it to be a little messy. All this is a little bit of oil. It's no big deal. And it doesn't really take as much oil as you would think typically. I put a little much in, a little strong. Definitely didn't take all that much. Maybe it came floating out a little quicker than I anticipated. It's all right, like I said, it's just, uh, just some gear oil. Not the end of the world. Now, get the PTO shaft mounted on there. PTO shafts are two piece, two halves. Slide over top of one another. Got our slip clutch here. Most of the time these come ready to go. Once in a while you do need to adjust it. Look in your manual, it'll tell you how to adjust the, the slip clutch. And there's slip clutch maintenance. A little bit more complicated than a shear bolt, obviously, but nice, a uh, nice option to have as well. So you got two bolts that we have to put through here to hold the, the, uh, the PTO shaft to the splines. And there's access holes on the top and the bottom of this shroud. So you wanna line up these bolt holes vertically up and down the same way as the access holes so you can have access to them. We'll say a second pair of hands makes this go quicker, but kind of nice to show you how you can do it with one person too. Hydraulic top leak makes life easy. Okay. It's that time of year, folks. It's time to think about planting if you haven't already. And for me, I'm thinking about planting our food plot screen, again, that we did last year. We did it a, a couple different properties, our, our bigger property that we had for a while, and then uh, the new place that we just moved into where we're at now. So very first thing we're doing here is actually, I'm kind of tilling up an area where I want to put that parking pad for some of the attachments. We're going to do multiple areas. And I like to just start from a clean slate. And so tearing up all that sod that's in there, and then I can push it around how I want to, throw on, um, some gravel. I'm probably going to put down some geotextile first and then throw on gravel. I just want to have it kind of fresh and even and, and just starting out that way. And so we're tackling that first and then moving into an area for the food plot screen that's going to go around all that winter ride that's coming up just beautifully. We planted that last fall. Winter ride is one of the easiest things you can plant in a food plot. Uh, I'm hoping to crimp that soon with the Packer Max crimper roller and then uh, throw down some clover seed and some other stuff for the summertime in there. Potentially even put down some of the soil builder blend that we got uh, from Northwoods Whitetails as well. We, we got all of our seed from them last year and in fact I carried their seed and sold some of it, but it's that's really not my cup of tea. I, I think that relationship would work a lot better if we can set up uh, an affiliate um, code with Northwoods Whitetails. So we're working on doing that with them right now where you can just buy it directly from them instead of having it shipped down to me and then we send it back out or whatever. That's kind of a pain in the neck. So look for that to come sometime soon as well. And so we planted uh, the stuff out in, in Richland, our, our, our bigger property, in early June. Well, maybe it was mid-June, in another couple of weeks or so. Um, and then we followed that up planting here almost a month after that. And the stuff that we planted a month later into that kind of middle-ish July time frame, you know, it, it turned out good. It got plenty high enough, probably, oh, maybe eight feet high still. Um, but we didn't plant it wide enough. However, compared to um, what we planted that was kind of a month earlier in, in mid-June there, that really, I mean, there was stuff that got 12, 14 foot tall. 
And that product is really a screening product, all right? And so we're using it to screen for food plots for deer hunting. Uh, you could use it for privacy, right? If you um, just wanna block your, your neighbor's view or block a view from the road or whatever it is. Now that's a pretty unique product, that food plot screen. Um, they've been selling it for quite a while now and our first time using it was last year. Really impressive. Uh, we've got some pictures, we got a little bit of video too. We'll show you different seasons, how it held up. It made it all the way through hunting season uh, over the course of winter, which is, is fine. It did um, kind of decay and collapse and fall down and all that kind of thing. But the trick with it is that you don't want to or need to plant it too early. You don't want to plant it when it's when the ground is super wet and saturated like it can be in, in uh, spring. And right now it's too dry. Nothing's, we're, we haven't had rain for a while. The ground is hard. There's not really, there's some, it sounds like some sporadic pop-up thunderstorms in the forecast, but nothing substantial. But the biggest lesson that I learned planting that food plot screen was you don't want to plant it too narrow. And we had some passes that were uh, only a strip wide, like five, six feet wide. And then some other areas that were really only less than 10 feet wide. And that's not really thick enough. You want to have, I think, 15 to 20 foot wide. If you went 25 foot wide, you're probably not um, hurting anything either. So you want to have that density to really block it through, especially not while it's green, but after it starts to dry out in, in that mid to late fall, uh, you still want there to be plenty of um, material there to not see through it. And so getting that extra width is where that's gonna come in handy. All right, so anyway, we're doing uh, a couple areas here. Some of it is new ground, some of it is existing ground. And actually we're probably gonna do more after this as well. Now, tilling new ground, I think it's good to till it up and then give it a little bit of time and then go through and till it up again. So try to plan ahead so you can do this stuff in stages. And if you're gonna spray, um, if you're gonna plant, if you're gonna fertilize, if you're gonna do all these different steps, just you know, it might help just to jot it down on a calendar or uh, make a list of this date and this date and this date is when I have to do all these different tasks to make sure you don't fall behind schedule. But this is actually the first time I've used a tiller behind the Kubota and I've been excited to give it a shot. Now, what I'm realizing and I have yet to look it up is if I can make my tractor go slower. It is going too fast right now and I'm in low range, I'm in first gear and it's going a mile and a half an hour and that's kind of fast for tilling. I wanted to go slower. Um, I looked like visually around the cab. I don't see like a creeper gear or anything else where I can slow this down, which is kind of surprising to me. And it's not working in my favor. And, and I'd like to go slower to really chop up that side a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna have to dig into that. Maybe you guys with the, the Kubota M4 already know that answer and can enlighten me politely, please. <laughs> but uh, regardless, it's a seven foot dirt dog tiller that we're using on the Kubota M4. Fantastic size, great match for it, matches up with the width of the tractor. Uh, same size tiller that we used on the John Deere uh, 4720 that we had out at Richland before. You're only about five horsepower, six horsepower more on this Kubota. And 84 inches as wide as they make the dirt dog tiller. If they made an, an eight foot wide, I would potentially try that on here. I, I'd see how it goes, but uh, eight foot is pretty darn big. I mean, this when you're standing next to this seven foot wide tiller, this thing is a hoss. Um, Dirt Dog is, in my opinion, the gold standard of tillers for tractors. You're gonna see some others out there. You know, interesting thoughts. When you start really looking around at uh, some of this equipment in the farming industry, a lot of it looks really similar. And I want you guys to use your own common sense and judgment on that where there's a reason for that, right? I mean, it's the same thing when you have these, these huge warehouses and, and factories and manufacturers that are just pumping out product. It's not only just for one brand, but they're maybe tweaking things here, there, labels and cosmetic changes and whatnot and making it for other brands as well. So I'm saying it without saying it, I think you get where I'm going, but this is a very good value compared to some of the other similar brands that are out there and just shot the price points, right? Our price points always include shipping, so that's a little bit different than a local pickup scenario, but we're getting this right to you, delivered to a, 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 for a very good price point. It's a high quality tiller. Look at the specs on our website. You're not gonna find anything tougher than this one. So Chris looked it up while we were uh, filming here, and it sounds like the creeper range is optional on the Kubota M4. I must not have that option. Maybe next time I take this into the dealer, I'll see if I can get that done, depending on how much it costs. And I also need a rear windshield wiper. This did not have that come standard on there. 
And as I've been tilling along with all of this dust kicking up, I literally was tilling blind. I had no idea what was going on behind me. I didn't know when to drop down the tiller and pull it back up. It was total guesses, just looking out the side windows to see if it matched up. Um, that's another note though about the top link. And, and I keep harping on this and it's for good reason because I've never done this before, never had the real ability to do so to adjust on the fly uh, the top link angle while I'm tilling. And there was a, a couple times that maybe going uphill it was, and I don't know, there's a couple times anyways where I could tell that it was starting to bog the tractor down. And once I adjusted that top link angle to make it not quite as aggressive, it really it lessened the stress, it lessened the strain on the tractor. And I knew I was gonna be making multiple passes anyway, so I didn't need to till down that deep at all, but it really, again, allowed me to make adjustments on the fly, not have to stop, turn off the PTO, get out of the tractor, adjust a manual top link, get back and repeat the process. It's, I'm tired out just talking about it. If you can, get a hydraulic top link. Last thing I wanna say, you're gonna see it where we had our garden last year. We tilled up a whole strip kind of by the barn last year where we put in our garden, and that was sod kind of like the, the perimeter around there, uh, just like we, we saw this year. That's a huge difference. Look at, you can see how well tilled that ground is from just one year earlier compared to virgin ground being tilled this year. It's incredible the difference a year can make. So get through that initial year. You're probably not gonna have the most amazing results, but every subsequent year after that are gonna be incredible. That is gonna wrap it up for us today, folks. I hope you got a good look at the Dirt Dog Tiller. These come in 60, 72, and 84 inch widths. If you have a subcompact tractor like a 1025 or a Kubota BX, get the smaller 48 inch that we carry from Oregon and ideal, all right? So those two are interchangeable. They're virtually identical in every way. If you're not sure what tiller to get, just reach out, send us an email. Happy to help match up the right size tiller for your tractor. I am not a guy that likes to recommend something that's gonna push the limits for you, right? I like to push the limits, that way you can kind of see where that limit or where that edge is, but I'm gonna recommend something fairly conservatively that I know you're gonna be very successful with and it's gonna last you a long time. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I sure had a lot of fun making it. And if you are looking for a tractor attachment, check out goodworkstractors.com. Our prices include shipping, rewards, and financing too. I wanna to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon. Yeah.